Thank you so much for staying with our news desk. Let's continue with our coverage. And as the Embu Business Expo Trade Cabinet Secretary Moses Kuria says, plans to establish counties' aggregation industrial parks are at advanced stage. Trade CS Kuria has revealed that the Kenya government is in the advanced stages of establishing county aggregation and industrial parks through a partnership. Speaking as he officially opened a two day business expo at the University of Embu, the Trade CS noted that the national and county governments will each contribute 250 million shillings for the park where traders will do value addition and directly export products. We are very grateful for the exhibition even for tomorrow because the county government have realized that we need to do this so that you can go to the outside market and we also appreciate it for even the tourism sector because we have to more people within, uh, from other counties to Embu. The objective of this expo is to bring together various investors from all fields of the economy including agriculture, education, motor industry, banking and finance, manufacturing, healthcare, insurance, ICT, beauty, hospitality, government agencies, NGOs, fashion and design, food and nutrition, building and construction, among others. I overheard Waziri saying, we are going to support you. Little did I know to see a young lady who is so focused on enhancing her business. She has been able to actually scale her business, but to a level where she can't do it anymore. And all she asked was, hey, all we need is finance. Yes. And I know the governor assured that we're going to get finance. Yes, the speaker before me actually said, what we are lacking as businesses is markets. And if you have the market, you don't have the finance. To call Ambango, as in all counties to build an, what we are calling the county aggregation and industrial park. Now, in July, we are now going through the models and the designs with the president, at Ajana, the chair of the council of governors, Madam Manuel with the president, to review him and We are going to do in two phases. One night, hour, work of the head. This is the way to Ile ni meona hapa leo, na fikiria ni sisi tuli sahau wanaichi hapo mbeleni. Wanaichi wakasama nini, mme tusahau, tutawaja, sisi tumesonga. Na kama na lasha kukua bie, tu, we have some work to do. Luku sahau wanaichi wako mbeleni, sisi tuyo tukonyuma. Us as leaders, us as a government, are the ones who are doing the catch up. Wanaichi is really ahead of us. And crossing our borders, former U.S. President Donald Trump is now a criminal defendant. He surrendered Tuesday at a courthouse in Manhattan and pleaded not guilty to 34 felony charges of falsifying business records. VOA's Veronica Baldaras followed the developments on this historic day. An image the United States had never seen before. A former president arriving to a criminal court building to hear the charges of his own indictment. In the courtroom, Donald Trump pleaded not guilty to 34 counts of falsifying business records in the first degree. Manhattan District Attorney Albin Bragg explained the charges during a press conference. Donald Trump and others made three payments to people who claimed to have negative information about Mr. Trump. One of the three people that they paid to keep quiet was a woman named Stormy Daniels. Less than two weeks before the presidential election. Bragg described the role played by Michael Cohen, Trump's ex-lawyer and now a key witness for the prosecution in the alleged scheme. He said the evidence would show that Cohen was acting at the direction of the former president. 
Michael Cohen wired $130,000 to Stormy Daniels' lawyer. That payment was to hide damaging information from the voting public. The scheme violated New York election law, which makes it a crime to conspire to promote a candidacy by unlawful means. The prosecutor added the payment also exceeded the federal campaign contribution cap, although neither that nor the violation of the New York election law was specified in the indictment. Trump's lawyers have said they'll try to have the charges dismissed. Even if the case goes to trial, the defense team will have multiple options to appeal a potential guilty verdict. Outside the courthouse, protesters made their voices heard and some scuffles ensued. Jennifer Fisher, a Trump detractor, spoke with VOA. I fear for the rise of fascism. I think Trump uh, is leading us that way and I want to fight for democracy. Trump supporter Dion Cheney downplayed the proceedings. A circus, a paid, a paid actor up there indicting a sitting president and somebody who's running, running for a president for his third win. They're trying to stop him and that's all that's happening. Trump himself is scheduled to deliver remarks this evening when he's back at Mar-a-Lago. A defiant attitude will be on display, says George Washington University law professor Paul Schiff Berman. I think it is very likely that the president will continue to attack the judge and the prosecution as being unfair or somehow a witch hunt. I can't see how that really helps his case. Uh, the case is going to be heard based on the facts and the law. Nonetheless, Trump supporters will probably join him tonight for what could turn out to be another opportunity to boost his 2024 presidential bid. And Therakanifi Governor Muthomi Njuki warns a persistent lack of funds in counties dealt with as a crisis, noting that service at grassroots levels are suffering. The Council of Governors Health Committee chair, who spoke on the sidelines of the first ever International Public Health Conference in Kenya, said that health was worst hit by lack of funds as no medication is being bought. According to the governor, there was a danger of county services are grinding to a halt if the cash crunch persists. We are hard hit as uh, the health sector because um, the biggest, the biggest uh, loser in this cash, cash crunch is actually health because health does not season, have seasons. Our people can get in sick any time. Health is a requirement all the time and therefore just like you know, you can never find a, pol a close police station. We never close our hospitals. We are always open. And if you close them, our people will go somewhere else and you do not want them to go somewhere else because somewhere else means they have to start seeking alternative uh, form of treatment, which could be traditional, mitishamba or maombi. At the moment, uh, counties, we are on our knees because we are not only missing money to pay salaries for health workers, we are also missing money to, to buy commodities and also be able to support systems that support health. And therefore, it is our request to the Treasury to prioritize. After they have hit their debt obligation, the first charge should not be Parliament, it should not be National Assembly, it should not be Senate, it should not be the, the ministries uh, at the headquarters, it should be the health sector at the village. And that is why, as counties, we are looking for ways of uh, separating the money that goes to all the facilities from what usually uh, is collected and taken back to CRF to be utilized in any way. Pastoralists living in Tana Delta in Tana River County have urged the government to control the number of livestock crossing to the county in search of pasture due to the ongoing drought. According to the pastoralist, the livestock cross into the Tana River County depleting the already scarce resources. Wameifanya hapa delta kama grazing area, lakini sisi tunagrazi wanyama wetu ambao wanatoshana na sisi tusiletewe vimifugo mingi ambao haitusaidi akimaliza nyasi akimaliza mashamba anachukua ngombe zake anaenda kukinyesha kwake hatukaribishi Kuki, kukikosekana kwake anakuja kwetu sisi tunataka tukaribishane lakini si kukaribisha mtu tu tumechoka 
ngombe ambazo zitatoka kaunti zingine ama e, sub kaunti zingine zipitie kwa mipangilio ambayo inahitajika ikifika kwa sub kaunti ya Tana Delta tujue ni, yani wametoka wapi ni ngombe kiasi gani na watakuja watalisha wa, wa, wa maeneo gani maana kipini yetu division ni, 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 ni sehemu ya skim hiyo unaathiri sana analeta ugonjwa na ngombe kwa nyingi anakula manyasi na malisa kama maji ilikuwa ni kidogo wanapiga maji paka na kausha yani anatuletea madhara mingi sana hata mgonjwa ambao alikuwa haiko eneo hii yetu saa hii amesuka ngombe zetu hata kwa mgonjwa ambao hajulikani and that's uh, the latest at this hour. Thank you so much for watching KTN News Desk. My name is Purity Musel Nzuki. I'll see you again at 2 o'clock with Africa Speaks. Africa Speaks. Keep watching KTN News. KTN News. Get the whole story. of women in business we focus on just how to start and run a business being the founder of the person starting the business you the vision bearer of this business so the strategy comes in what exactly um, do you wanna do what's the importance of conducting market research to any business out there um, market research basically gives you an insight of um, the product, the services that you're gonna offer, where exactly is going is coming to sit in in the population. One thing I would like to highlight: make sure you have the passion, because the dynamics of business or the particular business you're gonna invest in, 2022 is different from now where we are in 2023, and the projections of 2024 will probably be different. Right, kama ulivyosikia hapo nitakuwa na mwananguzi kila siku ya Jumatatu mpaka Ijumaa ndani ya Radio Maisha kuanzia saa 12 asubuhi mpaka saa 4 inaitwa Solomon Zuli au sio na kuanzia sasa itakuwa ni Zuli na Sugar Boy Tech has changed the way we live, work, or socialize. 15, 17 years ago when M-Pesa started, remember at the time those small Kabambe phones were 45,000 shillings. As you know, Kenya is a leader in technology in the region. There is a significant opportunity for such technologies to enhance healthcare in Kenya. Rather than using cadavers, 